In Fox 5 Health News, some new medical research raising eyebrows. The New York Times reporting that the Coca-Cola company is funding scientists to play down sugar's role in obesity. Mm, well, joining us now is Dr. Debbie Nampia Parampo of NYU School of Medicine. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you, too. Uh, what do you think of this? I don't know. Well, so Coke is actually suggesting that we spend too much time talking about diet when it comes to obesity oh, and that we should spend more time thinking about exercise. Well, of course. Mm. Well, so, uh, you know, there are good and bad things to that, but I think that on the good side, we don't have enough research being done on exercise. We have some, but if you compare it to, let's say, a new drug or a new device or a new surgical procedure, you know, we get a lot more funding for that. If there's a new drug, a pharmaceutical company, because they have a patent, because they own the drug, they actually have a desire to invest in the research, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas you can't own exercise. You have no patent on exercise. So really none of these big companies have a huge incentive to fund it. The only funding really comes from taxpayers in the form of the federal government. Uh -huh. So if you have a big company like Coca-Cola suddenly pouring money into research, I think that's a good thing in terms of finding out, you know, what are the benefits of exercise, you know, not just for obesity, but for other conditions. Right. But then you have the flip side that, you know, what do they expect in return for their money, right? That <laughs> perhaps some of that research might be a little bit misleading right. or it could be biased. It, we don't know for sure. I mean, they've hired some well-respected scientists and stuff, you know, they're giving mm. them grants to actually look at this, but it is a little bit People look at wonder. it with a skeptical eye. All right, exactly. we reached out to Coca-Cola today. We want to read you the statement that they gave us. They told us, quote, Coca-Cola supports finding solutions to obesity, including funding scientific research. We recognize that moderation and diet play a pivotal role in managing health and weight in combination with exercise. Clearly, we support calorie reduction as a tool for a healthier life. So basically what you would expect to hear from them sure. on that front. And we, we used to think that diet and exercise were very closely related, that mm -hmm. whatever you took in, you had to burn off that many calories to stay the same weight. If you want to lose weight, you had to burn off more, essentially. But now it's becoming more complicated, so there's this whole idea of sort of like fuel efficiency, if our food is fuel. Uh, so why can two people eat the same amount of mm. calories and one person gains a lot of weight, another person doesn't? So they could look at, you know, the gut bacteria, how good they are at getting calories out of food. I mean, there are a lot of areas of that could be looked at here. Sure. Yeah, one's natural metabolism. Okay, so let's talk about this since we're going to stay on the, the soda topic. <laughs> Pepsi is going to roll out its revamped, yes, Pepsi formula this week, minus the controversial artificial sweetener aspartame. All right, so what's the deal? Obviously, people aren't so crazy about aspartame, and maybe this will get people to buy uh, Pepsi, Diet Pepsi. Sure, I think they're looking at their sales, their bottom line, that right. because people are a little bit concerned about aspartame, that maybe this new version with sucralose could actually sell better. Uh, but, you know, if we look at the FDA, so they regulate these things pretty closely. And when they looked at aspartame, they, their studies found that at very high doses, it could be related to lymphoma or leukemia. But when we say high doses, we're talking about over 100 packets of sweet and low or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this artificial sweetener per day. Now, this new one with sucralose, this is kind of what's found in Splenda, for example. You know, it's relatively newer in terms of its popularity, so there isn't as much research on it, but it seems that it should be safe, too, in terms of, uh, you know, what the FDA allows. Yeah, it's hard. The diet soda in particular, th those sales have fallen a lot because sure. people who maybe thought they were being healthier, that they've switched yeah. to other things in general. So this is sort of one way to try to get them back. And you brought up an interesting point. So, I mean, the whole idea behind these artificial sweeteners was that you would trick your taste buds, right? That it tastes enough like sugar that you would feel satisfied, but at the same time, you wouldn't get the negative health effects, the calories. But actually, it's pretty good at tricking your gut bacteria, too. So what happens is you still might get a sugar spike. You still might start making more fat as a result of having the diet sodas so it's a little too gotcha. good right. and then Pepsi gave us a statement <laughs> we're gonna read you Pepsi's statement they told us decades of studies have shown aspartame is safe but they are just responding to consumer demand for aspartame free diet Pepsi and they are not aware of any concerns over sucralose which is the new sweetener so there you go soda the soda whole marketplace <laughs> has changed a lot sure. though in the past few years so I think we're going to be seeing yeah, that's more why things they've like all this. gotten into the filtered bottled water business of right yeah. a lot yeah. of different other power drinks and sport yeah. drinks yeah. Exactly. they're all right. in that yep. they see the handwriting diversify thank you so much <laughs> thank you doctor